Slicers are an easy and convenient and often fun way of filtering your data. With just a click, you can reduce a pivot table or a regular table down to just a single piece of information. You can filter by multiple criteria, like show me the sales for Central that were sold by Sports Emporium in the month of May. Holding down your control key will allow you to select multiple items in a single slicer. And with a click and drag, you can select items that are in sequence. They're easy to build and very convenient to use, especially when compared to the traditional way of filtering in Excel with the list of checkboxes. An issue that comes up sometimes with slicers that have lots of items is that when the slicer is not given a very large footprint on the screen, the user may have to scroll through a very lengthy list of choices. And even if you resize this slicer, some lists are so long that even at their maximum height of the screen, you still have to scroll. Now sometimes we can mitigate this issue by increasing the number of columns that a slicer has, because by default it only has one column. So we'll stretch the slicer out. But even in this case with a four column slicer, there are still too many names to fit on the screen, so the user has to scroll. To help manage a slicer that has an excessive number of items, we can use what's known as an initialization slicer. Above my sales representative slicer, I've got a list of the letters of the alphabet. When the user clicks a letter of the alphabet, the sales representative slicer gets reduced to only those sales reps whose last name begins with that selected letter. So I can look at those that start with M or S or B or R. Now once I have a list reduced, I can then more easily locate a specific person, like Ethan Green. But I could also hold down control and select multiple users with that last name. You could use this trick in a variety of different situations, like selecting a region and then narrowing it down to only a list of states within that region, or selecting a department and only displaying people who are associated with that department. You can also hold down control and select multiple letters. This way, if you want to look for people whose last names begin with different letters, you could essentially narrow the list to that subset and then start selecting those users. The million dollar question is, how do we create that list of alphabetical letters that are linked to the first initial of the last name of the sales reps? Looking at the source data, the first letter of the last name is just in another column of the table. But how did I get those letters? There are a lot of different ways that you could derive these letters. Of course, the one way we don't want to do is to type them. So here are three ideas for you. I'm not going to demonstrate the mechanics of building these solutions, but I will show them to you so they can provide you with some inspiration. One is to do this with flash fill, Another is to do it with a formula. And then finally, my favorite, the Power Query solution. With flash fill, we can give the tables column an example of what we wish we had and then have it figure out the rest. So in this first case, Francis Kane, I'll type it a K, hit enter, and then press control E. Now flash fill will do its best to figure out exactly what I was trying to do, but sometimes it might miss a few. So you always wanna spot check this list for accuracy. There is a potential downside to using the flash fill method if your table grows and new rows are added, flash fill will not automatically extend. So you'll have to go back and reflash the column. But flash fill is great when you have a relatively static list that's not subject to change. If your list changes, either in content or in size, it might be worth writing a formula to extract the first letter from the last name. Because formulas are persistent in the table, if new rows are added, the formula will extend. If the data changes, the column will update with the new initial. The formula for just such an operation is here. Now it looks extremely intimidating. I'll put a link here on the screen to take you to a website that explains the logic of this. Once you understand the logic, it's actually pretty straightforward, but on first glance, it can look quite scary. The good news for you is you can just copy paste this formula as is into your spreadsheet. And the only thing you really have to change is just the name of the field being examined. In my case, sales representative. You'll just change that to the name of your column that has the names. Other than that, the formula is ready to go. So if Frances Kane were to get married and change her name to Frances Smith, we can see the last initial is automatically updated. The last way I'm gonna demonstrate how to do this would be to utilize Power Query. Power Query is my favorite option because it's the easiest and it's persistent. So when the data changes, a simple right-click refresh will update. I'll click in the data, Go up to the data tab and then choose from the get and transform section from table or range in the power query editor what i want to do is extract the first letter from the last name so with the sales representative column selected i'm going to add a column and choose extract and i'll choose all the text after a specific delimiter in this case it's going to be the space 
I scroll over, this creates a new column with just the last names. With that new column selected, I'll go up to Transform and choose Extract and extract one character from the beginning. So I'll choose first characters and tell it I want one character. Now I have the first letter of the last name. Now it's just a matter of renaming the column to something more understandable, like last initial, and then go up to home, close and load, and send this back into Excel. Now because I was driving a pivot table from this data, I went down to close and load and said close and load to, and told it that I wanted to send the results to a pivot table report. Once I've built my pivot table, I can go to last initial in the pivot table fields list and right click add as slicer. And now it's just basic slicer customization. Customizing the position, the number of columns, the size, the color, and now I've got my initialization slicer. And now I'm ready to start clicking letters and reducing my larger list to a smaller, more manageable list. Thanks for watching. And remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.